Well, I'm on my own today, uh, solo uh, ride. My, um, my producer has set me up with a camera and said, um, you know, hit these buttons and, and uh, go from there. Let's see if we can do this independently. Uh, the idea is actually to be able to do more videos, possibly uh, increase the numbers per week. If that's something useful to you, and I, you know, it's very likely it would be. Um, today is a technical question. Uh, it's really two people talking, but they're asking more or less the same thing. Uh, one of them, uh, again, is Gabriel, uh, and um, from some thousands of miles away. And he says, uh, he's talking, referring to the, the violin girl video. And he said, did you keep the painting wet while I was working? And, um, and then he says, uh, or did you come back after it was uh, touch dry and work on it again using a, a medium varnish to bring it back like Russian painters do? Um, so I'm not actually familiar with what Russian painters do, but I'm betting it's very similar to what we do. The second question is like unto it, do you practice oiling out before repainting over a dried area? And that's from uh, James. So uh, let's keep this one simple. It may not be a very long one, but um, there are other questions, technical questions that are going to come up on the heels of this one. I shouldn't see just on the heels. I mean, after this one. Uh, related somewhat because it's, they have to do with uh, what happens between, you know, the last day you worked and today. So let's just talk about this first part, though, and that question of whether I keep it wet. I don't keep it wet. I have a, a student who does. He, uh, I don't know if he wraps in a bag with clove oil in it or something like that and manages to keep it wet. He says over weeks at a time. Uh, I don't make any attempt to do that. I'm not a, I love painting wet over dry. I love the ability to have a stable first wave and then a, a new go at it. Um, you do have to be thoughtful about what happens, what may happen to you, uh, after, you know, in the multiple layers. But, uh, for example, just in the darks, you paint the first layer of, um, of your darks. And I have this painting sitting here, but you can see a section probably from there where the darks sit there. If you paint over that three times, the darks are going to get, even if you paint them exactly the same note, they're going to start losing some of their their vibrancy, it's because the white is coming through, as it were, less and less. Uh, they talk about that refractive or something else, whatever it is. I, it's hard to believe that that could be happening, but I, meaning covered with paint, is there really something coming through, but uh, apparently so. And uh, But I have seen a difference, and that is you can get to a point where you actually get, uh, without actually make, intending to, you can get rather inky or certainly lifeless darks by this multiple layers of painting on the same area. So uh, I do try to uh, uh, minimize that. I think I mostly paint minimum, maximum of three layers. You know, see people refer to it as three skins. Uh, but the first skin I lay in on a day. In fact, I, it's my, I sort of, <laughs> my point of pride is that I lay my paintings in on Fridays. And the reason for that is so that they'll be dry on Mondays when I come back to work. And... Uh, so I leave it over the weekend, and there it is on Monday, ready to be painted on, wet on dry. But uh, And on that first day, by the way, it's important to know that I usually don't have a drying in problem on that first layer. Drying in is almost always in the second layer. Even the blacks, which are the worst dryers, they, they dry, drying in, if, for anyone who doesn't know, means simply that the, the color quality sort of dries out of it, and you can't see the value or the richness of the, of the note you made. And, uh, but I found that the first coat typically doesn't have a lot of that problem. Uh, but the second one does, and always will. And um, so uh, what I do between layers, though, is um, in, in, uh, in when that starts happening is I simply pull out uh, uh, retouch varnish and, um, and cover those areas of the painting that need covering. Uh, I use, um, I, I, this is my favorite one, it's Carlon Conservation Retouch Varnish. Um, it really is a nice, I better put this away from my microphone. It's, a, it's really a nice, it's the best I've seen from a couple points of view. It doesn't, it's obviously a much thinner 
mass that comes out when it, to hit your painting, and so it isn't covering it so that it's going to cause the thing to stop breathing. They actually say on it that the paint is that the medium is designed not to to do that, to, so that your uh, paint will continue drying uh, below. But this comes out in such a nice cloud. It's one, it's the nicest one I've ever seen. Very, very unusual, sort of a cap on top here. Um, but um, I'll show you what I do, and then we'll talk about the oiling out question, okay? Because I also do that. So this painting I brought in, it was the, um, and I, I'm hard pressed to show it to you because it's going to take glare on no matter what I do, I think. But um, from the front, maybe I can show you somehow or other, get some light on it. Here you go. But this is a uh, study, a preliminary study for a big painting. Um, and all I'm going to do opening my windows like a like a nice um, environmental guy. <laughs> and all I'm going to do is actually show you what I, once this, is, once this is shaken and all, I just simply make sure that's working and then I blow on a, la a layer like that, right? And a second one, and a third one, and cover the whole canvas. Now, I purposely left the bottom part uncovered and you can actually see the difference between the shine down below here and, uh, and that of this area. And you should be able to see that this is more lustrous. The colors are richer, right? And these colors here, well, you can't see. You don't know what they would be if I kept spraying it. But these were like this. The whole thing was very dead looking. And you can see that it's come to life very strongly. So hopefully you can see that well enough to understand what I'm doing. Now, what's fun about it uh, is that with Gamel, we used to use an atomizer. I say what's fun about it, it's very funny. But we used to use an atomizer. And an atomizer is a um, is a, a tube, you know, a steel tube, on a hinge with another tube. So it sort of looks like that. And you have your your two to one mix. I believe it was two to one. It's been a long time since I made this up for myself, of um, of Demar varnish, which you would hold it, you'd drip and stick this thing into, and then you'd blow, and you'd have this thing setting up there, and you'd go, you'd blowing on this thing, you go. Before you were half done, you'd be completely uh, out of your mind with oxygen loss or whatever. Uh, <laughs> but that was the atomizer, and you could actually had a, you had a pretty good control of that of that layer that you were getting. Uh, if you, when you first did it, you got way too much on there, and you got spotty and all that sort of stuff. But you could learn to get the pressure right with your mouth. So you know, if you don't have a lot of other materials, find one. You know, just literally like two straws, very very thin though. I mean, and um, but one of them is designed to do the, uh, for the blowing, the other one just sucks it up like, os what do you call that, uh, osmosis? I that's not the right word, is it? Uh, the scientific word for that action. Uh, at any rate, um, so, uh, and I was gonna say Robert Douglas Hunter, that, he did that till the end of his days, I mean, which is only a few years ago. Um, you know, I was very pleasantly surprised to see he was still applying. You know, I talk about how primitive our mediums are. Our, you know, our entire operation is, you know, we're painting with mud on, on, on rags with, 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 with pig bristles glued to sticks, you know, I mean, it's part of the amusement. <laughs> uh, Low-level technology doing, you know, we're really this elevated, uh, if, you're, if you're able, you know, really an elevated art form. But, um, but I do like very much uh, the proximity to the, to the earth that we actually have. Uh, but anyway, so that's what uh, Bob Hunter did. Um, now, the oiling out question, uh, when you have a painting, say a painting like this one, and you have some small, everything has already been, been covered, and you don't want to keep covering it, because if you keep covering it with that spray, it's going to get glassy, glossy, it's going to be very hard to put another layer on, and it's going to start looking bad. Just that layer is looking, it looks worse and worse. The beauty of this particular medium is that it will dry virtually matte, but it'll keep the life in those colors. Uh, that particular uh, brand, uh, and uh, most of them are rather like that. Some of them, but some of them hold a higher sheen and don't and go on have more heavily, and are harder to get an even spray. You saw how nice that was. I think you could see that coming out. Um, I have to think shut this window now. Then back in to life again. So, um, the, but the oiling out question. So you take a section like this and you want to repaint it and it's dry in passages or whatever. Yeah, I do use from time to time, I will use oil, um, set it on in some way that, you know, probably not brushing, but maybe very light brushing initially, um, but very, very lightly. And you don't want it running, and it will when you're not looking, it'll start running. And what you want to do is put it on there so it has its effect, 
And if you could brush back and forth, it's going to start picking up paint. So you really want to avoid that. But then take your your hand or your thumb or something like that in a paper towel or a paper towel or something and just touch it and look at it. Keep looking at it to see if it's to see how thick it is. But you want it basically to not be on there anymore. Rub it off on a towel in your hand. You know, take, keep taking it off till there's till you barely can get a, a wet part, but so your hand doesn't even feel wet. Uh, or look wet rather when you're touching after you touch it, but get most of it off again. And then just go for it, paint right into it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful to paint that way. I don't use any of these mediums as a substitute for direct painting. I mean, I say opaque painting. I don't want transparencies to be produced by mediums. I want my transparency to be a product directly of the color. Um, these mediums, these paintings are, these paints really are, relatively speaking, pretty um, transparent to start with, but. It's not transparency in the medium sense that you look for, which you really, when you get the right colors and the right values in the right place, and when you get your shadows flat, for example, if they're rich and they're flat, they're going to just look like you can, you can, you can walk through them. And um, that's one of the beauties of painting the Impressionistic way. You really have this understanding now that the colors do the work. They really do it. As long as you're the master of chroma, as long as you've explored you know, chroma, hue, and value well, and know the difference between, you know, know how to make a flat value, even a broken color area, as long as the value is flat, so that it remains atmospheric. It's, very, it's a very pleasant thing to see how much data is there. But of course, when you think about it, it's all your eye can see, too. Your eye doesn't have transparencies. It doesn't have a transparency lens. All your eye gets is the color value bouncing, you know, it comes in and hits the retina, goes to your brain. And that's all there is. There isn't more. So that's one, another one of those direct things I like about the Impressionist thing. All right, so I spent 12 minutes. I thought I'd spend eight, five, three. Um, thank you very much, Gabriel and James, for those questions. Um, and if you want to follow up more, I'll be glad to do that. Uh, yeah, so good, good. Uh, see you again. We do have a couple technical ones coming up related to this. So um, stay tuned uh, and um, look forward to seeing you. Subscribe, like, share. Uh, uh, and whatever the other one is, um, <laughs> whatever it is, I never will get this all. Um, uh, and make comments, yeah, ask questions. All right, thanks. See you next time.